I was in the New York airport and I saw so many books there in the bookstore. How to sew, I didn't buy that one. How to cook, I didn't buy that one. How to carpentry, I'd already tried that and it didn't work. And I was looking through all the books they had on how to. And I suddenly said, well, there's nothing here on how to live. How does a man live anyway? How does he conduct himself? How does he relate to other people or to God or to himself? God said, that's your job. Oh, I said, is it? I said, well, thank you. And so I began to write these how to cope lessons and give them on television. The last count I had of them, we had done 96 lessons. How many think you got that many problems? No, 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 don't vote right here. <clears throat> 96 lessons on how do you cope with the issues of life. I was in Sweden this week and they had the how to cope books, printing them there. They had the total man in a great big book this thick with all the different books into one book and they were just selling like everything. They had the book on dominion over fear. All of them beautifully done. And I was glad to see that in other countries of the world, they're receiving the same beautiful truths that we receive here. Isn't God good? Yes. yes. Yeah, give him a hand, that's all right. <clears throat> Today's lesson is how do you cope with irresponsibility? I'm not talking to your wife now, are you? Just listen to me. Or your mother-in-law, not even your kids. I'm talking to you. How do you cope with irresponsibility? Your first problem <laughs> is recognizing that you have it. Most people that have it would fight you if you told them they had it. And so really you have to kind of sneak in on them. Everybody still here? There may be some that the devil has said you're irresponsible when he has lied and it's not true. So let's open up our spirits and see what God has to say about how do you cope with irresponsibility. To be a responsible person is really living. I'll never, for, I'll never forget a famous pastor telling me how to very large church. He said, I, I like you. And I said, well, thank you, you know. He said, because whether you're with a man, his face or to his back, you're always the same. He says, you, 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 you don't like him to his face and dislike him to his back. And I said, but I didn't know I was that way. He says, well, you are that way. And I said, well, thank you for awakening me to a knowledge that is my disposition that I didn't realize. For you to be a responsible person gives good living, great living, beautiful living. Can you say amen? Yeah. Responsibility begins when you're young. It identifies itself before you're five years old. But you can correct it. You can correct it. If there's a weakness there, you can get onto it and make it your greatest strength. We don't go through life penalized where we get in a thing and can't get out. That is not true. You can take today your life and change it and rechange it, charge it and recharge it. You don't have to be tomorrow what you are today. How many know that? You believe that? Okay. There's no fatalism in this life. You can do anything you want to do if you want to do it bad enough. And all the people said, we must show responsibility to our parents that let them know that we appreciate being their children and uh, that we are responsible children and they ask to do, do something, we do it, and that we're right on the ball. That's, that's where it begins, right there in the home. Responsibility or irresponsibility. We must show it to our school teachers. The first day of school, the teacher looks at them and thinks they're all responsible. Three days later, they change their mind on some of them. Responsibility in the school, then to your employer. You walk through the gates and, and sign in, you look like the rest of them. 
But on the inside of that shop or inside that office, then what you are starts coming out. And if you're not responsible, you start acting like it. You lose stuff. When you lose stuff, it means you don't care. You know, if you care, you hold on to it tight. And you show yourself as to what you are. And the employer loves people with good responsibility. Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel 21, 28, What think ye? A certain man had two sons. He came to the first son and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. And he said, Yes, Daddy. I don't know. He said, I will not go. But afterward he repented and he went. Now, we have children like that. You know you would do. They say, I won't do it. The first thing you know, they've done it. They've thought it over and they've done it. He came to his second son and said, Likewise. He answered and said, I go, sir. But he didn't go. So what is responsibility? The man that said he would go and didn't go, how can you depend on him? Dr. Lynn Jones, before he went to heaven, used to come to our place at least once a year here in, in this city. And uh, every time he'd come, he'd say, a friend is a person you can go tiger hunting with. Now, the only reason he could say that was he had <laughs> been tiger hunting. He, he, he was in the Australian military and was in India for, for a while and went tiger hunting. And if you have an irresponsible person with you tiger hunting, you may not get back at all. He may be looking the other way when a tiger eats you, you see. But he said, a friend is a person you go tiger hunting with. He means responsible, always alert, always on the ball. Here we have two kinds of people, two sons. One says, I won't go. He repented and went. One says, I will go. Didn't go at all. Your point number one on page 72 in your textbook says, what is irresponsibility? Irresponsibility means not delivering what you promise. That's what it is. You just don't deliver what you promise. You promise to be there, you're not there. You promise to do something, you don't do it. You're full of alibis. Every dog is full of fleas. Are you here or not? Okay. Anybody can be full of alibis. Don't think you're clever because you have alibis. The devil will pump you full of them. You have all kinds of reasons for not doing what you're supposed to do. You can always say, I'm busy. And you're not, you're just confused. Irresponsibility means not delivering what you promise. You be. Irresponsibility means saying one thing but doing another. You say one thing, but then you're not responsible. Nobody can trust you. Nobody can believe in you. And I want to tell you one thing. It's the devil that does most of it. He's the most irresponsible creature in the universe. He makes you all kinds of promises, has no idea that he can, he knows he cannot fulfill them. Irresponsibility is not caring about keeping your word. It don't bother you. There's some people promise you to do something, not do it, and feel real good about it. And that's a bad part of it. Then who is responsible? Who is irresponsible? The person who does not cause his will to perform. The person who does not make his will perform inside of him. Oh, I want to do it, but I don't do it. Your will needs healing. So the person who does not cause his will to perform properly becomes an irresponsible person. The person who speaks one thing and does another is an irresponsible person. The person who is listless, listless and unteachable, he is an irresponsible person. A person who daydreams and is not energetic is irresponsible. You don't know what he's going to do or whether he's going to do anything or not. Let's look at some examples. The first person who ever lived was named Adam. He became an irresponsible individual. In Genesis 3, 17, and unto Adam, God said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hath eaten the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you should not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. God couldn't trust Adam anymore. They'd walk together. They'd talk together. <laughs> they'd been together. And the dramatic moment came when he said, I can't trust you. 
Isn't that something? Have you ever seen friends break up? And they had been so close together. And because something had erupted and they couldn't believe in each other, they had to separate. Irresponsibility is a terrible thing. It's a dangerous thing. It's a damning thing. Make up your mind that what you promise to do, you'll do. And what needs to be done, you'll do it without promising it. You'll just do it. And then you'll become a great person living on the face of this earth. And don't blame it on your parents, and your grandparents. I'm like my daddy. No, you're like the devil. So why don't you straighten up and live right? Adam became irresponsible by his own transgression. Nobody made him that way. Did you notice he blamed it on his wife? We blame it on all kinds of situations and people, but never on ourselves. Look at point four. Here's the opposite. Here's a positive. Abraham was a man of great responsibility and integrity. In Genesis 18 and 19, it says, God speaking, God says, I know Abraham. I know he will command his children and his household. And that means even his servants. And they shall keep the way of the Lord. Brother, everybody around him kept the way of the Lord. They will do justice and do judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. If you want God to bring upon you the things that he has spoken of you, brother, you got to live straight. You can yell out, I believe in the promises all you want to. God's waiting for you to live right. Abraham was a man of great integrity. God could trust him. He'd bring his children upright. He'd bring his household upright. He'd speak the word. And everybody would understand it and believe it and walk in it. That's what, that's what responsibility means. And that's what irresponsibility doesn't mean. Let's look at number five, and you got the opposite of this man. You have opposites living in the same generation, and even kin folks. And that's something. Even kin folks, and they're not alike at all. Number five, in Genesis 13, 11, it says, Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated. Say separated. separated. You see, that's terrible. And they separated themselves, the one from the other. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. And every time he pitched it, he went closer to Sodom until he finally made it and got there. Lot gave up his partnership. Finally, living in Sodom, he gave up his cattle. And finally, he gave up his family. He lost everything. He lost everything. Nobody could trust him. Impossible to trust him. He'd say one thing and do another. He left Abraham because of cattle, went right ahead and sold the bunch and moved into Sodom. He said cattle's the greatest thing in the world. Then he sold them. You see, that's what you call irresponsible. You say one thing one place, say another thing another place, then nobody knows what you're saying. Number six, here's a good one. Uh, Joseph was a responsible person on his own. Some people away from home don't live right. Joseph was in Egypt and he lived right. He had the faith of his fathers right in his heart. And he lived right. Even in Egypt, he lived right. In Genesis 41, 39, Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as you are. You should be over my house. According to thy word shall all my people be ruled. <laughs> the whole empire of Egypt would be ruled by this one boy. The whole empire of Egypt would be ruled by this one. You say, why? He could trust him. He was responsible. When he said, I'll build a city, he built a thing. When they had to build these large places to put grain, he didn't run into Pharaoh every day and said, well, the men didn't work. Well, the men didn't do this. We're not finished. Give us a little more time. America's full of these people today. The average American today does not have responsibility, whether it's in the shop or in their office or home or anywhere else. The devil has invaded this country with irresponsibility. And you don't need to be part of the problem, you can be part of the answer. Amen. But here was a young man with integrity. When a woman wanted to com commit adultery with him, it didn't matter how beautiful she was, he wouldn't do it. He said, no, it's not right, I won't do it. Responsible. Yeah, responsible, you see. And, and so, and he showed it from the time he was 17 years old. His brothers didn't want the father to know how wicked they were. He went home and told the whole thing 
how wicked they were. This would have been negative if it hadn't been for the positive dreams he was having. He was right on beam. He says, I know what I'm going to be, and you all, you're going to bow down to me. All you bad boys, you're going to bow down to me. Here's a man named Moses. It's point number seven. In Exodus 3.15, God said unto Moses, Thou Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the, and the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you, and this is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. That's kind of great, isn't it? How do you like to be the one to receive information like that from God? Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, Jehovah God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you, and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you out of your affliction of Egypt, under the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites, the Amorites, the per Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And they shall hearken to thy voice, and thou shalt come, thou and the elders of Israel, and the and under the king of Egypt, and you shall say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews has met with us, and now let us go, we beseech thee, three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Here was a man God could talk to, and God could trust that he'd do exactly what God told him to do. And God loved him. God loved him. And God will love you if you'll live that way. If you, you young people that are here, train yourself that way. You'd be amazed that even with preachers, there are preachers in this country today, and you, you know their names, that'll say, I'll come and preach for you. They won't ever show up. Many times they won't even let you know they're not coming. You just, you just arrive at church and they're not there. How can you trust a person like that, you see? And how can that person bring, bring something of greatness into your life? He can't give you what he doesn't have. No preacher can give you what he doesn't have. Are you here? It don't matter how great God is, no preacher can give you what he doesn't have. He can preach faith, he don't have it. It's just like pouring water on a duck's back, runs right off. He can only share with you what God has shared with him. That's all he's got. That's all you have as a believer. You cannot give to a sinner what you don't have inside of you. You can only share what you have. If you don't have any water, you can't give any water. And God wants us to be people that have it and can share it, and can give it. Can you say amen? amen? Moses is a man that God says, I can trust you. You're responsible. You'll do what I tell you to do. And for 40 years, he led those people through the wilds of the desert. I was praying and thinking over that last night that, uh, you know, so some of you say, well, that's real strange that two million people in the desert and, and they, didn't, they didn't die of thirst. Well, you didn't, you didn't uh, take into consideration their leader. His name was Moses. He lived out there 40 years with a bunch of sheep, and they drank water. He knew every watering hole from Cairo to Jerusalem. Are you here or not? Well, if you follow somebody, you better follow somebody that knows the watering holes. If you're smart. And so he knew everywhere <clears throat> where there was water. You say, why? He had been there for 40 years. That's where he stayed for 40 years, learning the watering holes. And also where the birds were, where they could have meat to eat. He knew that desert as nobody else knew it. And so when he brought those people through there, he said, I just here a few years ago, I just over here. He led them right to the Mount of God where God spoke to him the first time and told him to go and deliver the people of Israel. And God told him, I'll bring you back to this place with these people. And so they got back together. And so let's be people of responsibility, like Moses was. God can trust us. Our fellow man can trust us. Let's undergird ourselves. I know the biggest problem. The biggest problem is this, well, I can't trust him. Why should I be faithful, you know? He didn't do what's right. That don't give you any liberty. Because somebody else is dirty, that don't give you any liberty to have a dirty face. Because somebody else don't know how to live. They don't give you any liberty to live like they do. We're guided by, by the Bible and by God, not by human beings. If you're going to follow human beings, God knows where you're going to end up. 
But if you will follow the Most High God and follow the Word of God, you'll have integrity, brother. And when you speak, you will carry it out. I don't ever miss an appointment. Never. If I say I'll be there, you don't have to keep calling in and says, is he going to come or not? I'll just be there. You say, why? It's in my bones that I made a promise and I'm going to keep it. And, and so uh, God wants us all to be that way. Can you say amen? And don't go blame it on somebody. Look inside and get healed. Look inside and gear yourself up. Be slow to speak. Some people, oh yeah, I do this, I do that, I do the other. And in two minutes, they've forgotten what they promised. Did you promise so and so? I don't know. Of course not. You're irresponsible completely. Be slow to make promises. When you make them, keep them. And then you will be a responsible person. Under God, you'll be a responsible person. We got a letter from a preacher yesterday. And he says, uh, God's been dealing my heart. I'm going to get back in the ministry. And I looked at the letter and I said, get back into the ministry. Get back into the ministry. What in the world does it mean? Since I was 17 year, years old, I've been in the ministry. I haven't been out of it. I've been in the ministry. Every day of my life, I'm in the ministry. You don't have to get back in. But he had a heart attack and had a bypass and decided he better get back in the ministry. I don't know that God will even believe it, you know. He got out of the ministry to do other things. And how is it God going to believe he get back in and stay in or not? Somebody would come wrong, offer him something better, and he'd be out again. You got to have integrity in this life. You got to know what you want. And you got to perform all that needs to be performed to get that thing, if it's a good thing. Can you say amen? Well, let's go to the New Testament. You know, sometimes the Old Testament bogs us down. Let's go to the New Testament. We, we find a, a startling young man in the New Testament. Did you know he wrote one of the Gospels? His name is Mark. Now, that was an honor. That was an honor to write one of the Gospels of Jesus Christ. His name was Mark. In Matthew 26 and 69, it gives us a story. It says, oh, excuse me. In, in Acts chapter 15 and verse 36, it says, And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let's go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Isn't that nice? That's what evangelists do. They go back to the city where they've been and they preach again and see how they're getting along. And Barnabas determined... Now, there's a bad word. If your partner's together, don't ever determine anything. Talk about it. Barnabas determined to take with him John, whose surname was Mark. And Mark turned out all right in his later years. He must have gotten better somewhere along the line. Even Paul loved him, if you read the epistles, in his later years. But Paul thought not good to take Barnabas with them. I mean, to take John, Mark, with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia. Now, you see, they were over there in Europe, and this kid ran off and left them. Ran off and left them. They were holding a revival meeting, and he took off and quit. Ran back to Mama. And went not with them to the work. When, it got, when the work got heavy, he left. And the contention between these two great men, Paul and Barnabas, was so sharp between them, they departed asunder one from another. That's what irresponsible people do. They just go around dividing friends. Are you here? That's their business in life, dividing up people, hurting people. That's the about only thing they're good for. Now, you know I won't do that anymore. No you know I won't do that anymore. No Somebody clever says, you'll do it every time. You see. And then it worked out all right, except Barnabas was never heard from anymore. <laughs> You leave, you leave your source, and brother, you, you can disintegrate pretty quick. And Paul chose Silas. And so Silas became the dominant one in, in, in Paul's life after that. And they departed, being recommended by the brethren under the grace of God. So this irresponsible person caused responsible people to have trouble. And that's a great shame. That's a great pity. Let's go one more. And number nine, Peter became irresponsible by backsliding. You, you, you know the story there. Uh, Peter backslid and cursed and, and denied Christ. But you see, he came back and asked forgiveness. And for the rest of his life, became a very responsible person. So you can do the same. 
You don't have to say this morning, my Lord, all the times I've been responsible, there's no hope for me. That is not true, or I wouldn't be preaching this morning. I, w I, wouldn't even, I wouldn't even consider the subject if I thought you were hopeless. I don't believe that. I know the devil's irresponsible, and you don't have to be like the devil. I know that Jesus is responsible, and you can be like Jesus. So I'm only asking you to change friends, you know, and work with the one that is responsible, and let his nature come inside, and you will be responsible. Can you say amen? All right. Point number 10 is, how, how do you cope with irresponsibility? If someone feels, well, he's on my track here, how can you cope with it? The little A there says, learn to know yourself. Look inside and have a look at yourself. I look at myself almost every day of my life. Look at yourself and don't be fooled about yourself. Then number two, listen carefully to all your promises and your duties. Better write them down, really, you know. When you made a commitment, don't glibly do it. Write the thing down and see what you're committed to. Then you'll know how to keep it. And then see after you've looked at yourself. Then ask God for special strength. Look at Philippians 4, 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. How many believe that? We can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then number D is very sweet. Want to be responsible. <laughs> Desire to be responsible. Don't let anybody down. Don't hurt anybody. Desire to be a responsible person that anybody can depend on. Everybody, even the dog next door can depend on you. Not to hurt you, I don't mean that. Responsibility can be matured. It can be developed. It can be worked on. You do not have to stay in the state that you find yourself at this moment. You can be free by the mighty power of God.